Okay, so it's a pretty intense video about NFL stats. I'm just going to warn you. Uh, I spent a lot of time working on the NFL algorithm. And I'm here to report how we're handling week one. And, you know, get excited. Get excited. When I put a lot of effort into an algorithm uh, and really check things over, usually good things happen. So we're going to talk about what I've done. Uh, I've basically, here. here's the short of it. Like, this is the takeaway. There are... 354 players that I assigned a manual rating to and a ranking to. Those are the number of players that we found showing up on the depth charts for all the different teams. While we're still here in preseason week three, but all the different depth charts, we found 354 people that had no rating at all in our database. That's 354 people out of how many players? It's a good question. Um, I could tell you how many players we have in here, actually. Uh, we would just want to remove duplicates. Let's see how many total NFL players we have in here. Some good good things. Just take, take a think about the size of what we're working with, and I'll explain how we get it right, because this is really a difficult thing to do. So we've got all our player names here. So we're going to create a new sheet here and just take a gander at how many actual unique players we have. You can do this by the remove duplicates, which is this thing. 764, 763 or so players. Of those 763 players, how many of them do we not have a rating for? 354. How do I know it was 354? So I went through every position list and I looked for all the zeros and I grabbed them. Let me show you what I did and why. For example, we're now going to get our best look at what we think projected scores might be for the week one games based on who we think is playing and now an applied rating for people who had no stats previously. What do I mean? I mean like the guy on Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson. Quarterback. We have quarterback rating for Anthony Richardson of a 0.2. And we left Ellinger's up here at a 0.24 because he played pretty well in the preseason also. And he showed up with a, a higher rating from last season anyway. But I manually did something with Anthony Richardson and I made him a 0.2. You know why? Because if I didn't, here's what would happen. You'd go to his name. You'd find him. And you'd say, oh, he's actually is 0 0.01. Let's give, let's give him no rating at all. Even though he's starting, you put him way down here and it would change the projections for Indianapolis's offense. So you have to make a judgment call on what you're doing with these players. And that is kind of an art to what we're doing here. But what, what you could do, if anything, is you know that it's going to be between, I believe, these two quarterbacks in game one, in my opinion. I think you start Richardson and you have Ellinger come in if Richardson has a really tough go of it. I don't think you're bringing in Minshew. I think Minshew is getting put back to third string based on what I saw here. But I, we'll also have to watch and see what happens in the season. Point is, is you can adjust everything. I did my best without getting too technical anymore about going through every single roster. This is going to really help for your fantasy drafts. You can look at positions by team and everything, any way you want to look at it. Point is, I did what I could do, right? So now let's go and look at week one. Because we could look at preseason week three here, but it's preseason. We don't know who's going to be playing. Like things were like Philadelphia got destroyed by Indianapolis tonight. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think that's the final score. It might be something different. Let's, let's ask Google real quick. Final score preseason game Philadelphia Eagles versus Indianapolis Colts. Google. Didn't even tell me. Eagles fall, go winless in preseason. Don't see the score though. Score? Anybody? 27 to 13. Colts got another field goal. So Eagles didn't perform, but at the same time, they don't have anything to prove in the preseason. It's preseason. So talking about predicting preseason games is always going to leave you scratching your head because you don't know what's going to happen. So even though there are games coming up and, you know, you could talk about the Friday games, 
you don't you don't know what's going to happen. It's preseason, so let's go to something that's worthy looking at right now because you know they're going to play the starters in week one, and that is week one. So what does this say right now? Like what happened after we refresh? Well, first of all, let's work with the active injury report. Let's go back to the projection pivot sheet. This is now the place where you're staging anybody playing in your game. How do you look at this massive thing with all these different slicers? Well, first of all, we want injury status of this and questionable. Now, I'll even include doubtful for now because this is two weeks away that the season's starting. Maybe doubtful people will be starting at the start of the season if they're not playing in the preseason game this week. So these three we've got right now, that's going to change the players who are playing. These are all the players that are not playing. These ones, some big names on some big teams, uh, which I've discussed previously. But let's just go with the ones that we think are playing. All right? Okay, now, we'll, now that we've done this, We've got a list, which I've already adjusted and applied. So what does this say now? Boom, there it is. It's still the Bears over the Packers because so many players in the Packers are new. Let's look at that. Let's look at the Green Bay Packers and see what we've done with them and if we can do anything better. And this is one of those where you have to watch training camp. You have to have watched preseason and kind of get an idea. Here's the Packers. Packers have a very low rated Jordan Love, and we've put in some point ones for Sean Clifford and Alex McGaw. Have no idea what whether or not this is going to be appropriate, but it's something. Christian Watson, you got your kicker here, Andres Carlson, which also I believe is a new kicker, and I think we put that in manually. They, they are just so full of new guys. I do not know what to think of this team. What, what that tells me, look at this, point ones here, point ones here. These are all players that we manually adjusted something on. All these guys. That's a lot. That's 10. So here's what it says about the Green Bay Packers. Some questionable people, even more people. So new that, that you just, you don't know what you're doing. So when it comes to the week one on Green Bay, this is not, Chicago is not number one. They're the, not the number one pick of the week. They're not the number one survivor pick. No, no, no. And it's because you do not have enough information about the Green Bay club that is playing. So that's what we've learned about this game. And we're eliminating the Bears. And we're also eliminating Green Bay from two possible picks. Let's just glance at the Bears real fast, though. They're up here. You're estimating all of these guys, 11 of these guys are total estimate numbers, but you have more of a structured crew here. You have at least these guys that played last year. You've got 10 of them, including Justin Fields, that you've got more of a structure about knowing who this team is. So while they probably beat a young, new Green Bay team, you don't know that for sure because you don't know what Green Bay is, Green Bay is really coming out with. So, you know, it's not, a, it, it, it's, you can see why it's showing up as number one on here. I don't know what to do other than put in some more fake numbers for Green Bay because we have no idea who's going to play and how they're going to perform. And we don't know if Jordan Love can carry that team and, and outplay his QB rating. So many unknowns in that game. Washington and Arizona. Well, let's look at those teams. Let's look at Arizona. Kyler Murray being out is a huge impact on this game. So you don't make a decision on whether or not you take Washington until you know if Kyler Murray's playing or not. He's not even showing up on this list because he's got, he's got the PUP injury here. So you've got some people that you're estimating on Arizona at nine. And these guys, these tight ends also, really 12 of them. And you've lost DeAndre Hopkins here, right? Yeah, they, they are – a fairly new team with Josh Dobbs or Colt McCoy, maybe, right? If, if Kyler Murray isn't playing. So there, there's a sign of weakness here. You are estimating a lot of new guys, but you're also, you don't have a strength of anything here other than a wide receiving core and a James Connor. And their kicker's good. But if Kyler Murray's not playing, what does this team look like? And, and they're up against a Washington team, which really did perform in the preseason, let's admit it. I mean, knocking off Baltimore's unbeaten streak. Sam Howell looked good. Uh, Dodd came back with a comeback, right? 
Jay, sorry, Fromm. Fromm came back with a comeback. We should give him more of a rating. Uh, but Antonio Gibson and McLaurin may have gotten hurt. He's the under questionable now. Yeah, he's questionable. He'll probably be back for the start of the season, but he did certainly bring himself out of that preseason game. They're still estimating, you know, Washington's still estimating these 10 guys, but they just look better. It's still, I'm partial to them because I'm a fan and I'm local, but they're still a good survivor pool pick. That's what that means. Jacksonville over Indianapolis. Probably, right? You're estimating you're estimating the quarterback for Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson there. Interesting. Philadelphia over New England. So this is one that seems like a good idea not to play it as a survivor pool pick. It's probably going to be fairly heavily owned. Um, the Ravens over the Texans is another one that's going to be heavily owned. It says it's a 2016 game. Let's take a look at the Texans real quick to see what's going on there, see if we can learn anything about the Texans team and how we've applied the points to that team. They don't have Deshaun Watson. Where's Texas? Houston? Put it under Houston? Yeah, Texans. Um, so we don't have much of a QB rating. Just Davis Mills hardly applied anything to these three people, including Case Keenum. Case Keenum should probably get a higher rating. He is a quarterback that I recognize. And I'm going to do that to make that just a little more reasonable. He's Keenum. He's, where is it? Right here. Let's give him a 0.1 because he has performed somewhat in the NFL previously. So that's going to up their, up them a little bit here, right? Davis Mills and now Case Keenum. You're rating all these guys. We have no idea what to do with these you know, these 11 people, 10, 11 people. Damian Pierce, single tear, so decent running back numbers, a good kicker, a good tight end in Dalton Schultz, and reasonable receiving core that's there. So they, yeah, they probably don't win, but they're not terrible there. So what do you do in that game? Well, Baltimore is super heavily owned. It's just not impossible that Houston wins this game. So I, I want to you you want to stay away from the super heavily owned teams just in case they get upset because the way you win a survivor pool is by having the winners that people don't have, right? So so like can you imagine if you took the Ravens, the Ravens lose this game, even though obviously they're at home, they're probably going to win. You do want to take something safe because you don't want to get knocked out in week one, but is there like is there some more consistency to have in here? I mean, what does Baltimore look like? Who do you want to have on Baltimore? Obviously, you want to have Lamar Jackson. You've got a pretty sustained structure here, and then you're estimating these guys. Yeah, they do look strong and put together. Uh, and so heavily dependent on Lamar in a lot of ways, but he's probably there most of the time, especially in a game like this early in the season. So it's understandable why you would take that. It's just, it's going to be so heavily owned. So can you find something better given that the Houston's are not showing that they're going to be awful. They're, they're just showing they're going to be working a new quarterback instead of just Deshaun Watson. who was out frequently last year anyway. Hmm. Tough, tough game um, to stay away from on the survivor pool. Let's see if we can find anything better. I'm saying commanders are good enough in this scenario at home under new ownership. Jacksonville, possible, but you got a lot of unknowns on Indianapolis, but they did play well. They, they've seemed like a better team. Philadelphia, maybe. Kansas City over Detroit. How about that one? Now, you are looking for some stability in week one. It's giving you the benefit of the doubt with Kansas City. There's an injury on Detroit that's significant also here, right? There's this weird injury. 
on Detroit wide receiver situation. It's Jamison Williams suspension. He's probably suspended for more than just the preseason. He's probably not playing in week one. So that's impactful. What does Detroit have? Like, cause Kansas City's looking like a pretty reasonable pick for week one. Similar receiving where they have Montgomery running for them. And you're estimating these 11 guys down at the bottom. Not awful. And you've got a questionable Ross St. Brown, who's a very good player. So probably playing. They haven't been included in here because it's questionable, not out. Well, Kansas City probably wins at home, right? They're pretty good at doing that. This line is not that bad. You, you do you do want to pick something that's going to win. And here you have a five-point victory. You have a home team. Let's think about our home teams. You know, we're staying away from this Green Bay Bear game because we're just so light on Green Bay's estimate. We understand why we, we don't know what to expect here. And you don't ever want to, you never want to take the Bears in week one of your survivor pool and lose and then wonder why you didn't win. You want to go to a team that you, you would also think that would win. It's not going to be super heavily owned. So Washington is an option on here. Kansas City has to be included as an option on here. Their win score is 50%. They're showing a five-point victory here. You need to win in week one. And Baltimore, as you can see, is all the way down here. They're further down. So Kansas City has a higher rating. So these are now two very reasonable picks. Giants over the Cowboys by four. Again, underdog line. Not necessarily great for a survivable pick, but it is apparently great for a straight bet. It says that the Giants can win this game at home. So there's that. Atlanta over Carolina. Because Carolina is so bad, that's probably okay. But Atlanta is still Atlanta. I mean, they had trouble in their last two preseason games. It's further down here. They are at least home, but that doesn't matter. They blew a Super Bowl by like 30 point lead or something at home. I think the Super Bowl probably wasn't at home, but they blew a big bad game at home once, I think, or they, they definitely blew a game to the Patriots a long time ago. They, they can blow games. Once again, don't want to tell you to take Atlanta in week one, even though it's against Carolina, not having seen it, how they played it all this year because they're not necessarily great last year. Chargers and the Dolphins. Dolphins potentially have some offense. This seems sketchy and scary also, even though it says they win by four. Um, in L.A., a little better in L.A. But I don't, I don't think it's survivor pool quality. We just have Washington and Kansas City still so far. Rams over the Seahawks. That seems ridiculous. Seems like we must be missing information on the Seahawks for sure. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at our Seattle team list. And see that we've got Geno Smith at a 0.27 and almost no rating for any other QB. So we are coming in kind of light on the QB ratings. Who's it going to be? Who's playing? Is Drew Locke playing? Still questionable? Like, what do you do here? You're estimating all of these guys. And a lot of them are questionable. So it's kind of interesting. They're just they're short. Seattle doesn't carry a huge roster somehow. So this is a tough team. I can see that we're kind of missing stuff and I feel like we're underrating them a bit in there. So that's probably why I don't know why it's having the Rams better. Who do the Rams have? Let's see. Maybe we missed something. The Rams. Not very highly rated. They've got Matthew Stafford and not a great rating any more than minor three QBs. They're going to cut some of these people. The Rams are trying out a ton of new people apparently. I mean, 13 names on here, three of which are quarterbacks, three tight ends, four receivers, three running backs. It's, you can see it's a brand new team of unexpected there with the Rams. Don't think that is helpful for them. And clearly Seattle is just being undercut by the algorithm. That's why they're showing three points less. We applied a lot of just random points to, to just random people on the Rams there, right? And and so in this case, I can see why this is doing this. It's tough to read here in week one. I'd stay away from both these teams in there. Saints over the Titans seems like something that wins. Now, you got the Saints at home. 
it's giving them four points. And when you take a look at what has happened with the Saints in here, the Raiders are another team I think is going to do well. I think Garoppolo is going to read lead the Raiders, but lead the Raiders. Saints, where are you guys? There they are up here. Saints have Taysom Hill with a decent ranking. Somewhere, right? Where is he? It's questionable, but he's still there. You're going to give a good rating to Derek Carr, a, point, a reasonable rating of 0.23. Winston, we I took something off of because I think that you're going to see Derek Carr playing instead of Winston. And Taysom Hill still comes in and out. You're estimating some guys. So he wants to give this team some points. Bringing Derek Carr to this team is their new QB. He has some issues, but not Jameis Winston issues in the most part. He can lead a team down the field. So that, that should be interesting to see how they fare against Tennessee, which is a running team still, right? It's Tannehill. You can see the QB rating is low. It's Tannehill and Matt. Max Willis. Don't know how this Will Lewis is. We put a rating in there for him. Derek Henry, Derek Henry, obviously more than a kicker. Like Derek Henry is one of the only people you see that shows up on here that is higher than the kicker rating. He's such an impactful player, obviously makes them dependent on him. Even with him on there, you're still trying out a lot of other guys. What else are they doing for running backs to try to lighten the load at all? Ran four random dudes. That we gave slight, sorry, running backs are here. Chestnut and Spears. These are wide receivers we gave random numbers to. They do have DeAndre Hopkins. So there's that. So, uh, I mean, the Saints supposedly win that, but I don't know if you go against Derrick Henry in week one because Tennessee can potentially dictate this game with the run. So it's not a good survivor pick either. We talked about Baltimore, and this is where the odds makers are really heavily going on Baltimore and will therefore stay away from this, given that it's all the way down here with our point projections. Uh, you know, it's not showing up at the top by our point projections. It's still giving a field goal win for Ravens, but it says they're not covering nine and a half, for example. Uh, Niners over the Steelers. Steelers have played excellent in the preseason. Niners – who is, you know, why are they winning this game? Like, explain that to me. Who do the Niners have? Didn't they trade away quarterback? You've got Trey Lance, Sam Darnold, and Brock Purdy. You can't give all three of these people numbers. I'm tempted to, to take some numbers away from Sam, Sam Darnold. But but for the purposes of just estimating, we can see we're, we're overcounting QB rating here. Who's playing? We can tell who's your, uh, first string by doing this. We can actually see what our first string situation is by, by checking that. And it's Brock Purdy, apparently. So let's take the third stringers. Like, let's not have any high-ranked third stringers. There we go. We've got some high-ranked third stringers. Let me show you how we remove them. This is how we're going to fix up this file even better. We're going to take these third stringers and third string QBs, and there shouldn't be anybody... Although Ellinger's a third stringer, they're giving Minshew the second string. I don't think that's right. I'm going to leave Ellinger in there because he's playing good. These other ones, Tanner McGee, I did already. These guys already have ratings in here. So it's these ones. Let's, yeah, what are we doing with Joshua Dobbs? Let's do these four. And let's give them not much. Let's give them 0 0.05, hardly any. I'll show you what that does. Could give them 0 0.01, but they're, they're still a third string quarterback in there. That's going to make things a little more reasonable. And then we look at our first string quarterbacks and we have Jalen Hurts all the way through CJ Stroud. Right. This is this is your fantasy look at things based on the depth charts. Right. So this is supposed to be like the best order, really. Under second string quarterbacks, it's this order. But this is all going to change as soon as the game start. I mean, it's all going to change. So point is, we could do this forever. Uh, this is kind of what I am doing forever to get this ready for the season. 
And I wanted to let you know because it is changing. And you can see that as we go through week one here, what the heck did I just do? Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna put this back in the right order, put the team on top, and then injury status and name. And what that does is make the scores correct when you refresh. And you can see that, you know, we got through almost this entire list. We're down at Denver and the Raiders. I wouldn't bet against the Raiders with all the players they added. Since it's a high scoring game, I don't know why Denver wins this game. It doesn't make any sense. Denver has not looked good at all. And it was terrible last year. It's got Stidham and Wilson. Russell Wilson's getting older. He showed it last year. Jerry Judy may or may not play with a questionable injury. Um, so that, that one seems really sketchy for a survivor pool pick. We're almost done, guys. Jets and Bill says the Jets do it. <laughs> That'll be one to watch. You don't want either one of those. It's a Monday night game. You don't want to put your survivor pool in a Monday night game between two teams that are supposed to be playing their hearts out. So, because it's going to be either one of them that wins. So that's a no. We said stay away from the Niners because we don't know what we can see. The Niners got lowered down here because I removed the ranking on one of their quarterbacks to a 0.05 now instead of a point, whatever it was. Then you have Bengals and Browns, which is a tie, so you don't want to take anything there. And then Tampa Bay apparently has some trouble with Minnesota in a tie. So you don't want to take either of those. So if you stuck through this video, you can see we did a lot of updating. And while there will be additional changes to this in depth charts, we did enough that we can we did enough analysis. We said commanders, Kansas City are two big ones in our survivor pool. We say no on Baltimore because it's too close for all the way down here. That anything can happen. It's it's a, and everyone's going to have Baltimore. A lot of people are going to have the Chiefs too at home. So this is a, probably a heavily owned one as well. If you look at this by money line, the second biggest favorite is the Chiefs, right? So then the next one should be actually Washington getting a minus two thirty eight. Then. I mean, this is what the odds makers have the last time I updated it. Be descending by or ascending by money line. Money line, money line, money line. It shows you the order the odds makers have all this. And we're looking at our point projection model right here. So when we see things like the biggest numbers showing up, we have a better. I know this game with Green Bay, I'd say stay away from it because we don't have a good rating on Green Bay. But, you know, how in line are we with this? And, I mean, I don't, I don't trust this. I do feel like it's overinflating Denver somehow. Or it's certainly the Raiders changed around their roster. I want to look at the Raiders real quick. They now have, yeah, Devonta Adams, Josh Jacobs, you got Garoppolo, his rating was not that great, but he did pretty well with San Francisco, if I remember correctly. Three guys down here, including Brian Hoyer. Bunch of, yeah, a lot of new guys. 13 of them. They have Amir Abdullah. I mean, a decent kicker with Carlson. I don't know, man. I'm just wanting to make them better than they are, probably for some reason. But you can see they do have a lot of new guys, which is probably underestimating contribution. Probably. Probably. 13. A lot of this. All right. So, guys, that, that's a super long NFL video, but it is the most in-depth prep I can give you. As you can see, we are over overriding calculations for all these players. And as soon as they get stats in week one, we're going to get rid of this override and relook at everything. And it will just get better and better and better each week of the season as we go. But this is pretty much as, as good as we can make it right here, right now, knowing that we're going to make some forecasted estimates. And from this list, from this list, descending by projected margin of victory, if it was not survivor pool picks and just other picks, it's Washington, it's Jacksonville, it's Philadelphia, it's Kansas City, it's the Giants. Mm. Now, we'll talk about all that later.
All right. Good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning. Enjoy NFL. It's so much.